everybody welcome back to the atheist apostate this is your host the aa and we're back with another rebuttal video this time we're back with something fun yes this is fun not to mock you or insult you if you are an ancient astronaut proponent who believes in this but i had to ask myself hey if i'm willing to give the uh, heartland uh, hypothesis for the book of mormon a serious rebuttal I need to give a rebuttal to the ancient astronaut hypothesis that Moroni was an angel. Or an angel, an alien. Yes, people. Yes, if you're a member out there. Yes, if you're an investigator watching this. Yes, if you have to believe in ancient aliens. So, you, those in ancient alien uh, proponents, you guys, for you investigators and members, yes, they do believe Moroni was an alien. Moroni was an yeah, Jesus, I hear you, man. I hear you. I know, that was, that, that's just kind of whacked out. So, even the aliens, yeah? He says even the aliens are embarrassed by this one. Alright, guys, we are going to cut on over here. We are going to watch Ancient Aliens clip, The Origins of Mormonism, Season 8. This is Ancient Aliens from the History Channel. Manchester, New York. September 21st, 1823. So I'm going to stop here for a quick second. September 21st, 1823. Correct on that date, but what is September 21st? Anyone out there know anything about the uh, solaces and equinox that are watching this right now? If you are, what is September 21st? I'll give you a moment to reply. Yes, it's the autumn uh, equinox. So it is the autumn equinox. All right, I just want to point that out because the autumn equinox back in Joseph Smith's day was uh, if you were a scryer, uh, stone seer, uh, stone peeper, so like Sally Chase and uh, Joseph Smith both were. On September 21st, those who believed in this occult practice also believed September 21st was the day that they can contact with the dead, and the dead would show them buried treasures. So yes, go do some research. I will give you the link of the author in the book uh, who uh, goes into great detail on this one. So just remember that as you're watching this. As he settles into bed, a 17-year-old farmhand named Joseph Smith begins to say his prayers. Suddenly, without warning, an overpowering light envelops his room, and a robed figure appears. A All right. So, so far, this is staying in line with uh, what the Mormon uh, LDS teachings teach, so there's nothing to rebuttal here. Though, I'm trying to figure out at this time, and while I was watching this episode, when I very first watched, ever watched this episode, I was trying to figure out what the hell this had to do with Rhodi being an alien. Yeah, I still don't know. You don't know either? Jesus says he has no clue either. According to Smith's account, not only was his robe exceedingly white, but his whole person was glorious beyond description. Speaking from the center of the... Well, hold on here. So, he was robed in white, and his figure was glorious beyond appearance. So how does that make that alien? So as you're reading that, what indicates that's alien? To me, that indicates still supernatural, but aliens aren't supernatural according if they exist. They are so uh, physical entities. They, you know, they are entities, not um, you know a spiritual. Uh, presence and this is what we're getting is some type of supernatural presence whether it's a god jesus an angel or from any other religion so it's a supernatural presence so far so far not that i believe in this but this is what i'm getting out of this and this is what the church teaches too the light the angel whose name is moroni sends smith on a quest for several sacred texts hidden all right this is going to be important here I know this stuff already. This I haven't seen this in a long time, so I want to do this. I was going to watch it, get refreshed on it. So just uh, remember, it's been, what, seven years, eight years since this episode's come out? Uh, at least seven, eight years uh, since this episode came out. <clears throat> so, 
they so far have everything correct. The only thing I want to get a little picky on right now is thank you narrator for being able to say Moroni proper. Thank you. I hate hearing Moroni and you're going to hear that in a second and it drives me friggin nuts. I'm going to pull this back just a quick second here on you guys because the next part here isn't actually church factual. So I need to go back even further. There we go. On a quest for several sacred texts hidden near a local tree. As far as I know, it's not hidden near a local tree. I was raised LDS from the age of seven up to 22 years of age before I left the church. So I was a firm believer in the church. I wasn't always the greatest member. Anyone who's watching this that knows me knows I was far from a perfect member and I broke almost every single rule and I got in trouble for it all the time. I was the black sheep of my ward. I was the black sheep of my stake. I just had a hard time keeping rules and I was sure I was going to outer darkness. That's what the uh, Mormons LDS call hell. So their version is outer darkness and I knew I was on my way to outer darkness and when I turned my life around before I left the church, I was on a mission to atone for all the sins, and I say sins I committed. Oh yes, I committed a lot of sins, hallelujah, I changed. I know Jesus, there's no such thing as uh, hell. So these guys don't know, I know, you know, you, you know. Yeah, Jesus was a Jew, you guys all agree. If you're a Christian or you're not a uh, mysticist, uh, you know, atheist, we all agree Jesus was a Jew, so Jews don't believe in hell. I'm not trying to get too far off the video, but Jesus is making a good point here. Jesus says he was a Jew and he doesn't believe in a hell. So, you know, my outer darkness fear was all out of nothing. I know, I know, you still think it's funny. you you got a sick sense of humor too. So yeah, so... It, to get back on point, sorry, to get back on point... Mormons believe that the Book of Mormon was found on the Hill Camorra. On the Hill Camorra in Upper State, New York. So outside of Palmyra. So they have Joseph Smith here in Manchester, uh, New York. Correct, he did live in Manchester. But the plates were found on the Hill Camorra. That's why, or if uh, outside the Mormon faith, if you go look back in journals, in uh, history books, it's called Mormon Hill. The Hill Camorra is also known as Mormon Hill to non-members at the time, and you'll hear it called more Mormon Hill outside of LDS literature and LDS journals uh, than you will hear at right, a Hill Camorra. So these guys are saying it was found where? Let's go back here. Hidden near a local tree. Hidden near a local tree. Ancient alien proponents. If you're going to freaking claim something, yes, if you're going to freaking claim something, get your facts freaking right. Get your facts freaking right. Oh, face palm that. You know, I am not a fan of the Mormon church. I'm not going to lie. Not that I'm not a fan of the members. I love a lot of the members. My best friend is a member. I iterate it all the time. This is nothing personal against the members. This is against the church and its leadership for teaching false doctrines that they no longer teach or uh, believed in. So, and whitewashing those old doctrines that they no longer believe in. I believe in transparency. This was a fun one. This is just a fun one for me because I take this as serious as I take the Heartland Hypothesis, which is zero. I don't take anyone, either of those seriously. But, but I like to play devil's advocate too. Yes, I do. So hallelujah, I'm playing devil's advocate. And if you're going to go after a faith, not its members, if you're going to go after a faith and show its transparency or make claims about it, please get the facts right before you start going into your claims. Facts is evidence. Evidence is believing. If you cannot get your facts straight, then you lose your audience because your facts are not correct and what you're saying is probably not correct. Let's get on. Upon uh, locating the tree, Joseph dug and indeed found the text. But they recorded a language which he could not read. That is correct. And so far, I don't see how this is anything to do with an alien. 
How is Moroni an alien? And it was the heel Kimura. A second visitation from Moroni told Moroni. Moroni. Not Moroni. So is it M O R N E? No. Or is it a double E? No. It's an I. Moroni. Joseph Smith, where he could find what we might call a device of some kind that would allow him to read the text. Okay, guys. This device is called the Urim and Thummim. So according to the Mormon Church, it is ancient uh, stones uh, that allow you to be able to uh, translate. So they are mentioned in the Bible, uh, Old Testament, early on. So in Joseph Smith's time, in Joseph Smith's time, he was known as a seer and a uh, stone peeper, glass looker. What does that mean? He was a divinator. What is a divinator? A scryer. They took the stone, the stone that they uh, believed was magical and had magical powers. They took this stone and placed it in an item, usually a hat or a box or something like that. They would put their head into it. They would look down and they would see an object of treasure. So this item here, this mechanical device that they're talking about, this mechanical device they're talking about in LDS mythology, so in LDS uh, theology, I should say, is a natural device, not a mechanical device, a natural device, a object, a seer stone. They don't call it that, but if you know the true history of Joseph Smith and you know that he use seer stones and the church doesn't deny it i will even put the links down there and sally chase was also admitted by the church to be even bigger seer than joseph smith and joseph smith's chase stone is from sally chase's well that's why it's called his chase stone it came from sally chase's well a very well known and reputable seer and peeper just like smith just like the object he used to find the uh, others claim they saw the Book of Mormon with too. This isn't a mechanical device as they're saying. Joseph Smith was given this translating stone, the Urim and the Thummim, with which he was able to... See, see, even he, Giorgio, my favorite guy, who doesn't love Giorgio? Come on, it was aliens, of course it was aliens, Giorgio. Even Giorgio isn't saying it was a mechanical device. Giorgio here says it's a stone. Correct. So these guys can't even get their breaking, uh, but their stuff down together. To not only write down this text, but also to, to be able to translate it. He then translated the texts into English, which become the Book of Mormon. And... So far, so far, correct. You know, this guy here we're coming to, this little dude down here. Oh, I guess my camera. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse saw over here. But this guy here, who calls him Moroni, they all do except for the narrator, he thinks that the Book of Mormon came from underneath a tree. I don't know. I think he's getting the uh, first Vision Grove uh, mixed up with the uh, Hilcomor uh, uh, vision of Moroni. I think that's where he's wrong. I think he's mixing the two theologies of Mormonism. The first vision, which happened in 1821 when Joseph Smith uh, claimed to be, uh, be between the age of 14 and 16. So, and he had four different first visions that he uh, officially has written down. The church accepts them as four official. There's up to nine that they admit are out there uh, first uh, vision accounts. This guy here, this guy here, is mixing the first vision up with the Book of Mormon uh, Moroni visitation and finding of the plates, guys. He's mixing them together. I don't know if he's intentionally doing it or he just doesn't know uh, LDS theology at all or well enough and he's just cherry picking some stuff because these guys, that's all they freaking do is cherry pick. And it depicts, among other things, that after Jesus ascended into heaven, he came to the Americas and ministered to the native peoples here. To All right, guys, we are just under halfway into this uh, episode uh, on uh, ancient aliens. Do you guys see anything yet that this is an alien? 
where where are they leading? What evidence so far are they bringing us? Where are they bringing us here to make this look like some type of alien? I'm interested. Convert them to his way of life, and that at some point the texts that become the Book of Mormon are deposited here, so that Joseph Smith could find them. Seven years later, Smith publishes these texts as part of the Book of Mormon, establishing the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All pretty much true, minus the tree part again. And that's just a mixing up of uh, theology on one guy's part. The other guy gets it uh, right, I believe. No, Giorgio Daisy mentioned that, just the stone. So what does this have to do with aliens? I'm waiting. A denomination with more than 15 million followers today. Many religions worldwide have been founded with the help of angels. Whether they're representatives of Christian, Muslim, or Buddhist gods. These apparitions are thought to be a way the gods intervene on Earth with humans. But ain't okay. Oh, but 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 uh, but ancient. I, I heard by ancient. We're going to get it here. How are they going to twist this from something that's absolutely a religious theology into an alien? Let's go and find out. Ancient astronaut theorists suggest that sometimes these heavenly visions and apparitions may not actually be angels sent by an omniscient God. And curiously, the so-called angel that led Joseph Smith... Whoa, why does he have glasses here? These aren't glasses glasses, they were two stones bound together, two stones bound. Smith to the sacred texts that would become the Book of Mormon did not profess to have heavenly origins, but claimed to be from another part of the universe. Now, Moroni did not say that he Moroni Moroni not Moroni he was an angel he said that at one time he I had lived talks. on earth but that now he came from the Pleiades star cluster and he said there were many others like him these extraterrestrials may whoa 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 that's not where he said he came from so not at all all right let's see what the mormon account is here in september 1823 as he again opened his heart to god joseph was visited by a heavenly messenger a heavenly messenger so far, up to what they say on the ancient aliens uh, part, uh, even to their come before the Pleiades. So let's cut over. Joseph. And hold on, guys. This is coming out of Joseph Smith. This is his. This is what he tells us he was told here. So this is coming from Mormon scripture. I am your fellow servant. Moses truly said he said his name was Moroni and that God had a work for me to do he told me of an ancient record written upon gold plates okay so right now uh, up to this point when we get into but the ancient astronaut uh, ancient astronaut proponents uh, believe so far we're not they say that's where we haven't got up to them saying that he's saying he's from another you know celestial place into the Pleiades yet so he's shown to tell him about the plates. Giving an account of the former inhabitants of this continent. Former inhabitants of this continent. See, Joseph, by the way, if you notice, Joseph in the video is not underneath any, well, he's underneath trees, but it's not the way the ancient astronaut, um, one proponent uh, has it, where it's like this uh, grove area. And one big tree and they're all scattered out. No, he's on the hill Camorra, a hill. So not a flat barren hill with no uh, just grass or meadow. Like this is a hill with the forested hill. So this is a forested, rolling forested hill, part of the Appalachian chains. So, and this is what the Mormons are dick, uh, or uh, dick, uh, or dick. Whoa, we can't get the word out today. What they're showing. Yeah, let's not even, you guys laugh at me on that one. Have a good laugh. The writing on the gold plates was unknown to me. So far, I so was good. told the plates contained a fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So far, so good. 
Joseph was given knowledge of an appearance that Jesus Christ himself made after the resurrection to the people. So good, so good, so far. People of ancient America. During this visit, Jesus invited the people to feel the wound marks in his hands, feet, and his side. Okay, so we're not anything. He called up. 12 apostles. Okay, so they're going a little more deep into this because this is coming from their theology. This is coming right out of their scriptures and they just made a uh, video presentation of it. This is their scriptures. So this isn't, you know, a narration of someone saying it. This is a narration of the scripture. So I'm playing this because it's important. ...to teach his gospel and performed miracles. So he's come to, you know, Jesus has come, like they said. They go a little more into detail here. So he uh, calls 12 apostles. He uh, performs miracles. Joseph could describe this as though he had spent his whole life with them. I... So they're saying Joseph can describe this in detail. So we should be coming up to Moroni telling uh, Joseph where he's from now. So according, let's flip back, according to where they stopped or we stopped, think that we presented the most peculiar aspect of any family that ever lived upon the earth. All of us giving the most profound attention to a boy, 17 years of age, who had never read the Bible through in his life. In time, Joseph would be given the knowledge to translate the record which had been revealed to him. He would be given the knowledge well, he had the Urim and Thummim uh, to translate, even ancient aliens in Mitzvah. He wasn't given the knowledge. The knowledge was there. The uh, tools were there. So to use, the, you know, the instruments were there to use. Until then, he was instructed to wait and prepare. Until then, he was instructed to wait and prepare. So, instructed to wait and prepare. Crossing, we'll be talking oh. about... We don't need. Why is that important, guys? Why is that important? Because nowhere in Joseph's account does he say the angel Moroni says he's from the Pleiades. Where the hell do they get that from? Hold on here. Let's let's do something. All right, guys. We are going to pop this over here. Let's pop this over here. Let's make the screen larger for you guys so you can read it. This is the LDS uh, scripture uh, or uh, manual for teaching in their uh, Sunday school classes and their uh, classes. So material needed, a pearl of great price for each child. So this is their primary. This is their lessons for teaching their children in primary before they hit the age of 12 and become either a young man or a wo young woman and start going to those uh, classes. So they will need a pearl of great price. Why? Because Joseph Smith's account is in the pearl of great price. All right, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Teach Moroni's visit to Joseph Smith as described in Joseph Smith's history. So we're going to open that tab for a moment. We are going to keep on going. Who was Moroni? Show the children the Book of Mormon in, or Moroni in the Book of Mormon. Explain that Moroni was the last of the Nephite prophets. He lived about 4000 AD. For you who are like myself, atheist or a scholar, a secular scholar, Christian era. So he lived about 400 CE, Christian era. And he wrote some of the Book of Mormon. What did Mormon do, or Moroni do with the golden plates when he finished writing them? So then they give the scriptures. Why was Joseph Smith chosen? Let's not worry about why he was chosen. So that's a, not the uh, thing. What did Joseph Smith tell us about uh, what the book contained? So he tells them what the book contains. So what happens after? What, how, how was he able to find the plates? So, nowhere do we hear that he comes from a different world. Do you guys, while I'm scrolling, see that? I don't see that. All right. Let's see what the Gospels. We're going to scroll, 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 and get back. 
So church history, we've already popped over there. I need to find the Pearl of Great Price. All right. During the space of time which intervened between the time I had the first vision and the year 1823. So Joseph Smith's telling us during the space of finding the plates and his first vision. No, I don't want to copy this. So it was, you know, um, that was the time period. Where is, and I condone my weakness, perfections. I had a, he had a robe. Okay, I'm going to scroll. You guys don't need to see here. So what I'm doing is I'm just scrolling down here and trying to find where the verses are. There we go. He called me by name and said unto me, he was a messenger sent from the presence of God to me. From the presence of God. If you're familiar with Mormon uh, theology, you might have heard the word kolob. So, and you may have heard that is the planet God lives on. I am hypothesizing. My belief is they get this from the constellation Pegasus bullcrap. From he called me by name and said unto me he was a messenger sent from the presence of God. From the presence of God. What does that mean? So where God dwells. Heaven. So they are claiming that where God dwells is heaven and the Mormons believe. And that's not what Mormons, you know, this is Stacy. You know, we could do, uh, I will do a video on co-op and all this down the road. So this isn't where, but they are believing, they are uh, saying that because the Mormons claim God comes from Kolob and that's heaven, so then uh, Moroni is coming from heaven and Kolob, and Kolob has to be in the Pegasus stars, and we'll get to that in a bit. That's where they're getting this from. That's where they're getting this from. I knew it. I already knew. I had to lead you guys into here. I have seen this episode. I had already, you know, come to this conclusion. I know the... Why am I flipping back and forth right now? I want to get further into this and get going so we can get back to the ancient aliens and just blow through this video. So, because to me, it's not that... I, I'm more wanting to show how ridiculous this is. But I guess as I'm trying to show how ridiculous this is, there is some basis of uh, evidence to support it. So, not much in my opinion, but there is some to support it. So, and that is why they're saying Kolob. So, if I go here and pop up, you guys bear with me. Watch. Kolob. So, I'm not a fan of... Uh, so, actually, five fascinating things, everything. And this is from LDSLiving.com. Kolob is the star that governs all others. We first learn about Kolob in Abraham 3, 2, 3, when Abraham sees it in a vision. So through the Urim and Thummim. Let's get this larger too. So through the Urim and Thummim. So the church is claiming, the church itself, Joseph Smith, says that the Urim and Thummim comes from ancient times. So that it is from ancient times and that it is from Abraham's times. Abraham is the father of all three monotheistic faiths. He comes from the Samaritan culture and why there's a lot of Sumerian uh, theology and mythology within the Jewish and Christian faith. So because Jewish or the Christian faith and Islam come from Judaism. They are sister faiths born out of Judaism. So... This is why the claims are being made of Pegasus Constellation, because Kolob is believed in. So, Urim and Thummim is what revealed it to Abraham, they say. And they say, And I saw the stars, and they were very great, and that one of them was nearest unto the throne of God. So, and one of them was nearest to the throne of God. And there were great men, or great, many great ones which were near unto it. And the Lord said unto me, These are the governing ones, and the name of the great one is Kolob. So, because it is near unto me, for the Lord I am thy God, you can go more. From the scriptures we learn that Kolob is a huge star, which God has designated as one of the governors. 
So I'm not getting too much into this. We have to, I just had a, you know, church admits to collab. They don't deny it. Church members, you know of collab. So if you're an investigator watching this, learn about collab. So learn about collab. So this is all important. So this is all important on here. So this is where they get the Pegasus uh, comment from, guys. This is where they get the Pegasus comment from. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to sidetrack us up off of here, but you guys had to know where this is coming from on their side. Maybe giving these messages to world leaders and to prophets and seers. Okay, let's go back because I took to us off. Us let's go back here. Sorry. There's like him. These extraterrestrials may be giving these messages to world leaders and to prophets and seers and mystics to let us know that we are the product of an extraterrestrial interbreeding and an ongoing contact with... Well, okay, guys, I see your point where you're trying to go with this ancient alien, you know, hypothesis that Rhodi was an alien. It's an epic fail. We won't lie. It's an epic, epic, epic fail of all the fails I've come across so far. And this is the biggest. So, no, from here on in, where, where, where does the Book of Mormon talk about interbreeding? Where does it talk about interbreeding? Where in the Book of Mormon do they talk about Nephilim? Because in ancient, ast uh, ancient astronaut uh, hypothesis, the proponents claim that the Nephilim of the Bible are aliens. And so the giants of the Bible are aliens. We do not get that talked about in the Book of Mormon. I was raised with the Book of Mormon. I've read the Book of Mormon several times, even after leaving the church. So because I read it as not a historical religious text when I left, but as a critical uh, reading. So just like I did with the Bible in the Old Testament when I left, just like I did with Quran. So I read them as a, as a critical text. So let's get into this here. Let's switch back. With these other people who were not born on Earth. And we have lost touch with that history only because we refuse to believe the truth that is recorded in our historical books. This is no worse than the Heartland Hypothesis, people. So you can, you know, hold on here. You guys refuse to listen to us. You guys are refusing the truth. You guys are refusing the evidence. There's the evidence for you guys. You guys are refusing it. No, no one's refusing it. We're refuting it because the evidence says otherwise. The other evidence says otherwise. And for you LDS members, don't start cheering too much right here because they have evidence and the concrete evidence and the facts say otherwise to the Book of Mormon, period. And we will cover that in a later video and I'll probably tag that in this video at the end along with the Heartland video. So they will be at the end for your uh, recommended viewing, suggested viewing. Whew, we're almost near the end of this bull crap. Almost near it. And see what's right in front of our faces even now with the encounters that are happening in the modern world. Oh, thank Lord it's done. Thank Lord it's done. What, Jesus? Yeah, I know, Jesus. It, he, it was painful, wasn't it? It was painful. Painful, painful, painful. So, yes, guys. This is the ancient astronaut hypothesis that Moroni was a alien. So, it's out there. It's believed. You saw it. David Wilcox, Giorgio, stuff, blah, 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 crazy hair, Giorgio, and others on Ancient Astronauts, uh, uh, the TV show, Ancient Aliens, are spewing this as it's truth. It's not truth. It's horseshit. It's absolute horseshit. Just like the Heartland model, just no different. Horseshit. If you're going to at least try to claim that the Book of Mormon is true, and those uh, for those who do believe it's true, at least stay to the narrative of the book. Like, at least, even the Heartlanders are staying to the narrative. They just got somewhere as whacked out and lost logic and rationale. All right, guys. All right, if you agree with me, let me know why. If it's not for the same reasons, let me know why and provide your evidence. If you disagree with me, as always, you're fine to disagree with me, but back it up with evidence. Show me the links. Show me the articles. I don't want wiki. 
So if it comes from Wiki, it goes out. It goes out. Show me solid evidence. Whew, yeah. So, all right, guys. This was the uh, AA here with the Atheist Apostate rebuttaling ancient astronauts. Uh, Moroni was an uh, alien. Until then, I hope you guys all have a great day and enjoy whatever's ahead of you. This was the AA. See you guys later.